Now, you qualify 12th mm-hmm. for the Daytona 500. And again, I go back to the question I asked about the season in general. When you qualified 12th, what were you expecting out of the Daytona 500 that year? Well, when you qualified 12, obviously, that was through the 125s. Right. So, you know, I knew what kind of car I had in the 125s. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I got, I think I finished sixth in my, in my, in my twin. And I knew the car was fast. And, um, you know, obviously, I was relatively inexperienced in restricted plate racing. Uh, but knew that I had something that uh, was – I had a big stick, and I knew it. And uh, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, the biggest thing was is that the happy hour, uh, you, know, um, you know, we were one of the few cars really that could run with Dale. And, you know, our, and I was being careful. And, uh, you know, I called my brother that night, and I told him, I said, uh, I know this will sound funny, but, uh, you know, I, I can win this thing. I said, this car is that good. And he goes, you're kidding. I said, no. I said, I can just take care of it. I said, I think, you know, I'll have a shot. And, um, you know, and Buddy he said the same thing. You know, Buddy said, look, he says, it'll come down. You just gotta, you just got to hang tough. You've got to be got to stay out of trouble. We just got to ride. And he said, at the end, there'll be a caution. We'll get a shot at these guys. And, and sure enough, I mean, everything that Buddy had – had laid out really came to fruition uh you know the racetrack came the the race actually came to us the way it did you know we obviously stayed out and uh, we're on used tires and Earnhardt had fresh tires and you know for us to be on his bumper every last lap there um you know we were on used tires and we were hung out and we were hanging on and uh but you know we had a shot and certainly as uh, as fate had it uh, it was our it was our day now you were in position to win that race you were running second and you ran well the entire day now Earnhardt was obviously the class of the field for most of the day. I mean, he had leads of 20, 30, 40 seconds at times. But you were still running second, third, fourth, top five, certainly. I was lifting all day. I was I was taking care of the car. I had a car. I was, I was pedaling the car. The car was loose. The car was free. Uh, but I would, you know, I wasn't taking any chances. And when, you know, when we, our car would go away a little bit, I'd just pedal the thing. And buddy just say, hang tough, you know. And we we knew, I, I knew that when I, if I could go, at the end of the race, I could go wide, flat on the mat. I could have a have a shot. My car was good enough when I could drive it flat out. And I just pedaled the thing and was t- careful with it all day. So that's why I think, you know, it, the race really went the way it went, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you look at, you know, a lot of times in that race, you know, those guys, uh, you know, we were up front the majority of the time. And, you uh, and then when it come down to that last bit there, uh, you know, um, when Elliot and Labonte were back there, I mean, those two guys together couldn't even take care of me. And uh, when it come down to the last part there, I was flat on the mat uh, ever since that last restart. And we were on used tires, and the car was loose, and that's why I was going on the high side. And we we had a good as car, I think, as, as, as he did, uh, in my opinion. And, uh, again, it just was down to he had tires, and we didn't. And, um, you know, we were all hanging on. And, uh, you know, it was uh, it was just a – a very unique race and we just played it out the best you know that worked for us and then obviously the end was uh, was obviously to his dismay something that wasn't wasn't what they needed you mentioned a few minutes ago that you stayed out under that last caution and you were on older tires yeah bobby hill was in front of us he yeah. stayed out as well yeah what went into that decision why stay on the track track position point? buddy you okay. know i think buddy you know, uh, that one stop before, Buddy had come in. I said the car was free, and Buddy knocked the her down. So, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Buddy did yeah. what Buddy thought. I mean, you know, Buddy did what Buddy wanted to do. That was the way it was, and you just you just hung on. And uh, and you said yes, sir. And I said it was loose. Yeah, I said it was loose, and I saw him. He knocked the spoiler down. You know, on that one that one the stop before that, and you know, the car was was free, but it was fast. And uh, you know, that last dude, he said we're going to stay out. You know, and you know, it was a matter that you know I'd get by uh, Hillen, and we did. But at that point, you know, Earnhardt had a, a run at us. He had fresh tires. And uh, once he got to that point there, I was able to get in the draft and stay with him. And I could hang with him. And I could get to his rear bumper. But I didn't have enough grip to really drive the car in the in the uh, lane that I wanted to. And I had to go to the high side. And I had to protect, uh, you know, because I had uh, Labonte and, and Bill. So, uh, you know, it was just uh, at that point, you know, you, you kind of like – you know, you kind of like know that, you know, the odds are, are, are stacked that, you know, he's probably going to win. He's on fresh tires. You're hanging on and you know how you're hanging on. And, <laughs> um, you know, that's the way it was. That last lap, what did you see? What were you feeling? What were you thinking? How did you react the whole nine yards? You know, it really, as I alluded to, the car was loose and I was having to, you know, just, you know, turn to the right and, and, and just drive up the racetrack. And, and he just kept, he could run the bottom. And he just kept, but he kept inching up the racetrack in front of me, just protecting because he knew I couldn't go to the bottom. And I think he just kept moving up the racetrack. And I figured that I could go to the bottom. I could hang on 
a lap or two, you know, on the bottom if, when, when it come down the last lap, and that's what I would try. And so I kept staying to the high side, and I knew that when Bill and, and uh, Terry tried me down the back straightaway together, they didn't have anything for me. They had to pull back in line. I knew then that I didn't have to worry about them. I just had to worry about Dale. And so I, at the last few laps, um, I really was just concerned on trying to stay in his tracks and, and try to keep my, my foot on the, ground, on, on the, on the floor. And, and, you know, um, every lap I was on his bumper going into one. And uh, coming down the last lap, we drove off into turn one, and uh, I had caught him, and I was on his I was on his bumper going off into one, and I got really loose getting in there. You know, Terry was right there, and I got loose getting in, and I went right to the high side, and he he followed up there to some degree, but kept the bottom, you know, the the middle, and uh, I lost some some ground, uh, you know, on the exit of two, and uh, going on the back straightaway. I mean, those guys were coming, and my car was starting to pick up some uh, momentum, and I I could start to feel the thing coming back on him and i felt like by the time i got back start finish line i'd be back you know to his rear bumper or close again but i didn't think i was going to get him and um you know uh going off into but i had planned on going to the bottom uh in uh and i was gonna i was gonna stay on the bottom and hope that i could get those guys some momentum from those guys there and or you know be able to uh to pull up to him and see if i could you know at least make a move and uh we got off into three, and it, the, the look w- of what transpired at that point was really what you saw in the movie Days of Thunder when the car turned sideways and it was slow motion. Um, really? Yeah. Wow. When I when I because I drove to the bottom that lap, I drove to the bottom, and if I'd have stayed in the high side, I probably got wrecked. And uh, <laughs> I drove to the bottom, and I was going to stay on the bottom no matter what. And as that transpired, he started to slow, and I of course the you know the rate uh, the rate. Um, Increased and I started to catch him a lot quicker. And but I noticed that you know it looked like the the, the car was starting to get loose. And the thing, um, he started the tail slid out, and all of a sudden it did one of those wiggles, and it went up the racetrack. And as I drove by, and I really thought we were going to hit each other at that point, yeah. you know. And uh, and then his car just moved out of the way, but it was a slow motion kind of scenario. And and all of a sudden, you know, it just he just did a masterful job, and he saved the car, and the car turned up. And I drove right by on the bottom, and then I immediately looked in the mirror and saw that I had, you know, a couple, three car lengths on Terry and Bill, and I knew that, you know, that them together, they couldn't get me. And uh, so I, I really knew coming off four, if I stayed flat on the mat and the exit was there, that, you know, it was uh, it was going to win. I was going to win. I don't want to try to over-dramatize this, but when you saw the car wiggle and Earnhardt slide up the racetrack and you flash by and you look in the rearview mirror and you see Terry and Bill in your rearview mirror, I mean, did that quicken your pulse? How did it affect you? You know, at that time, um, I distinctly remember, you know, looking in the mirror and seeing how far uh, Terry was behind me. And I knew that, you know, that they had tried me together down the back straight and hit right. nothing for me. And I knew my car was strong enough that they were going to struggle to get back to me with the distance we had. And I knew at that point that if I just, you know, didn't make a mistake, that I was going to win the race. And I was excited, obviously. And But at that time, you know, you know, you just – you just do your job, and that is to make sure you look in the mirror. At a restricted play race, you look in the mirror a great deal of time, and you're just watching that mirror, and you're just looking for them to see if they get any kind of run, any kind of momentum, and just try to stop anything and you know uh, throw off any any kind of a uh, attempt that they would make. And that's all I was really mindful of at that point until I got to the start finish line. And you know, at that point there, it was just I think uh, utter relief, uh, you know, and, and adulation at that point, and just you know. Uh, the culmination of, uh, you know, some life uh, lifelong dreams fulfilled. One of the greatest quotes that I've heard, you said something to the effect of you would never forget what the sun felt like on your face mm. in Victory Lane. How much of the rest of the day do you remember? Because oh, it, would, it, would seem, it would seem to me like it would almost have to be like a dream or something. Uh, it's it's embedded in your, in your memory. Uh, yeah. I, I remember... Pretty much um, everything from that point on. Uh, I remember, you know, not really knowing where Victory Lane really was and coming down through there and obviously, you know, a little bit, uh, uh, you know, disorientated as far as where I was at coming down Pitt Road and trying to figure out, you know, where, where I needed to turn in and, you know, asking Buddy about that and then seeing all the guys and seeing Teeny, you know, you know, jump on the back of the deck lid and, you know, and then driving in there and, you um, you know, seeing all the guys, you know, that you, you know, I mean, you know, the guys from RJR that you, I had relationships with and Larry Belusky and, you know, I mean, just everybody that, you know, you'd been friends with and, um, 
you know, driving in there and uh, just, you know, the thought of my father and, and you know, what we had, had had worked so hard to accomplish and all those things, you know, just, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, all the, all the stuff, you know, climbing up on the door and, um, you know, putting the picture for that big hat on and, you know, going, <laughs> yeah. you know, from there, you know, being, you know, in the cop car and going upstairs and going to the Unical suite and, you know, you know, yeah, I mean, all those things. I mean, it was just, it was a long and enduring part of it, but probably the, you know, the most enjoyable, you know, hours that you could fathom. Uh, and then, you know, for it to be, you know, over and you come back down and the transporter is the only transporter in there and you know george is there with your stuff and you know you're driving out of the place you know and uh, to the point of getting on the airplane the the next day and the next morning you know just uh, yeah just i can remember every 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 bit of that you know uh coming back to the racetrack and doing a live feed for to tulsa for pure layer where they were based out of and yeah. uh, you know the party we had afterwards and you know, get on the airplane in the morning and walk, you know, it was, you had to walk outside and walk up the stairs, you know, and then I just looked back over at Daytona and, you know, just all those memories and all those thoughts. But, you know, the one that you spoke of, you know, I can, like you said, I, I don't, when I think so fondly of it, I can still close my eyes and, and I can just feel the warmth, you know, and you can just put yourself back in that moment uh, pretty much at any time. It's just that life altering, you know, in my opinion. You've been to Daytona many, many times since that day yeah. when you go back now is it just another racetrack or do you feel i guess kind of a sense of ownership i think you have equity in the place yeah yeah i feel that i, I think that you know obviously with what um they do for us down there um you know um with you know the daytona the 500 club and being a part of that um you know you just feel very vested uh, in the place. And I think, you know, that, you know, like you say, you have equity in the place, you have a piece of it. And um, I don't know, I guess I just feel at home there. Um, I mm-hmm. really, I really truly love going to Daytona Beach. I love being there. I love driving in the place. Um, I love just being there. It's, sometimes it's just difficult to even even leave. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. you feel, yeah. you feel, you almost feel, um, you know, disheartened to physically have to leave the grounds and, and drive up 95 or get on yeah. a flight or whatever. I mean, just some place that you just feel very, very attached to.